So, Madam, uh, looking forward to your talk on uh, smile tips and tricks. Thanks, yes. I will not. I will make it so lucid that nobody will have any questions. <laughs> so, I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks of improving refractive outcomes in smile. Since there is a renewed interest, uh, there are a lot of people now doing smile, and also other companies coming up with smile like treatment. I think this is a very relevant thing to learn. So just like any other refractive surgery procedures, the first important thing is to have a proper patient selection. Because unless you have selected your patient properly, you are not going to ultimately get the correct result. So patient selection and counseling, knowing exactly what they want and whether you'll be able to give that uh, outcome is what is going to be the first step in deciding and doing a good smile. Coming to the procedure itself, the important step to learn is to do a good centration because you are going to create a refractive lenticule and therefore centration here has a lot of meaning. Unlike when you are making a, a flap which can be decentered slightly and would not really have a big impact on the final outcome, here centration plays a very big role for that, it's important that you are checking. Um, so what I do is I don't uh, open the eye till I'm quite close to the, the contact glass. Uh, so that once I open the eye, the patient can have a look at the green blinking light quite easily and is not searching for it. I try and make sure that the green blinking light is right visible to the patient and there's very little time spent before you do the centration. Just when I have three-fourths of the applination, I have the suction on, but immediately I check on infrared. If I find that I'm not happy with the centration, you can switch off the, uh, the suction immediately so that the footprints of the contact glass doesn't become too established. Otherwise, every time you refix, it will go and fix in the same position. So make sure that you are doing it quite quickly and before the suction footprint has achieved its uh, goal. The next step to do, Donald Trump is stuck here, mm -hmm. though everywhere else he is not. <laughs> the next step, important one, is to prevent any suction loss from happening. Because suction loss would not only make you feel uncomfortable, but also the patient. So suction loss prevention can happen only if it is going to be that you are paying full attention to the procedure. Suction losses are not very common because the lasers have become very fast. The suction itself is not really painful, but it's important to give that vocal anesthesia and keep guiding the patient that it is now coming to an end, especially when the second pass starts because the patient may stop seeing the green blinking light or may see a slight shift or may feel that they are not able to see that clearly. That's the time when you should be prompting to them that that is what is going to be happening. And so nothing to worry. In some ways, if you can keep them occupied, uh, the, the most times what I do is I ask the patient to think of a very happy moment that they had in life and you would not believe they spend that entire 25 seconds thinking about what was the happiest moment <laughs> and, and don't even realize that the procedure is over. On the other hand, if you try and tell them that find out the most miserable moment that you had in your life, they would have like uh, at least a 25 to be told to you within those 25 seconds. So it's better that you keep them thinking about the happiest moment and let then this procedure be one of the happiest moments for them. Uh, it's also good to learn the initial separation because that, that makes uh, life very simple uh, when you are trying to extract out the lenticule. So in initial separation, it's important to find both the planes uh, quite early on so that uh, before all the tissues become dry, what most of us do is to create on one side the upper separation and on the other side the lower separation as you saw here. And then it's very easy because you can make out whether you are in the correct plane or not. Uh, it's also a good idea to separate out the complete lenticule so that 
it's a free floating lenticule inside and then you don't really need to go in to uh, take it out. You just take it out from the incision site itself and then you are not disturbing much lamellae. And finally, the free lenticule just needs to come out. So uh, as you can see, the separation is very easy. This is just a simple spatula. You don't even need fancy instruments to do the procedure. Uh, make sure that you're not, you don't keep coming, going in and out all the time because every time there is a potential of taking epithelial cells with you, especially if the person is on a little older because they have tendency for uh, having a, a slightly freer epithelial tissue. And once you have a complete separation like this, you can just grab it from the, uh, from at the incision site itself. And finally, you should have uh, a good wash and an ironing on top. So I don't like to go inside the pocket as far as possible unless that I have done a lot of manipulation inside. But otherwise, giving good wash from outside and hydrating the lamellae is an important thing. And finally, making sure that the incision is sitting well. The, uh, the eye actually smiles back at you at the end. So thank you very much. I hope I've saved a little time for you. Thank you so much, Madam, for the very lucid talk. And as you mentioned, I don't think people will have questions on how smile is done uh, after this. And